Today on The Spot, we cut some tracks through a demo of DJ Hero with Will Townsend. If you're looking for something DJ, I've got just the thing. Demonstrate strategies of Shadow Complex with Donald Mustard. I'm just gonna throw the challenge out there. Show off the latest PlayStation 3 network releases and catch up with Tor Thorson with the latest breaking news. Not Compton. We're also full of international flavor as well. We share the latest edition of Import Friendly and have you join us on location in Germany for Gamescom. Move over, E3. Gamescom is now the biggest consumer game show in the world. And if that isn't enough, we'll also be giving away more free stuff. So stick around today on The Spot. Hey everybody and welcome to Today on the Spot. I'm your host Chris Waters, bringing you your regular dose of gaming information. With me is Lark Anderson. Lark, how's it going? Great, how you doing? I'm doing really well, man. Now Lark, I know what you're thinking. It's the weekend, doesn't the internet usually head out of town, you know, pack some sandwiches in the bag, round up the lolcats? I think that's pretty much exactly what the internet does. That's right. But we've got so much cool stuff going on around here that it just had to spill over into the weekend. And speaking of, if you stick around to the end of the show when we're doing some trivia questions, you can have the chance to win full game codes for Shadow Complex if you can answer correctly. If that isn't enough to make your weekend, we'll also be giving away t-shirts and other sweet prizes. But first, we're gonna start it off right, going over to the news desk. What's up, Tor? Hey everyone, it's your GameSpot News update for Saturday, August 22nd. I'm Tor Thorson. The big news this weekend is coming straight out of Anaheim. No, I said Anaheim, not Compton. Thank you. Besides being the site of the Magic Kingdom known as Disneyland, the Orange County suburb is also home to BlizzCon, the annual conference of World of Warcraft developer Blizzard Entertainment. Today's big announcements for the World of Warcraft expansion pack, Cataclysm. Due out in 2010, the expansion pack will add two new races, Goblins for the Horde and the Werewolf-like Worgen for the Alliance. I mean, if they were human once, why not? The storyline will center on a fiery disaster. I mean, it is called Cataclysm after all, which affects all existing zones and realms with tsunamis, maelstroms, and all manner of natural disasters. The expansion will add all sorts of new zones, including Earth and Fire Elemental planes. And Blizzard also announced a new Monk class for Diablo 3, which may, or may not be, out next year. In other news, Activision announced release dates for two of its top games of the fourth quarter. DJ Hero, the turntable-based spin-off of the Guitar Hero Rhythm game series, will launch on October 27th in the U.S. And that's just one week before the publisher rolls out Bizarre Creations Blur onto the starting line on November 3rd. The following week, Activision's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 drops, and GameStop executives are already predicting that the Infinity War developed title will be the best-selling game of all time. Hey, no pressure there, right? Well, boom, that's your GameSpot info drop for Saturday, August 22nd. For more headlines like these, head on over to news.gamespot.com. Thanks for that look at what's going on around the industry tour. Now for a look at what's going on in your living rooms. Folks, if you've got an internet connection and a PS3, this next segment is for you. This week on PlayStation Network. Starting with downloadable games. New this week is Smash Cars. An arcade style RC racing game with an emphasis on stunts. Players earn points not only by winning the race, but also by performing stunts, interacting with obstacles along the courses, swapping paint with other racers, and skillfully drifting around corners. Developed by Teak Games and Create Studios, Smash Cars is a follow up to the 2003 budget PlayStation 2 game of the same name. Smash Cars is out now exclusively for the PlayStation Network for $14.99. In the demo department, just out this week, take a look at IO Interactive's Mini Ninjas. Rather than portraying ninjas as bloodthirsty killing machines as so often seen in games, this kid-friendly action-adventure game uses a bright and charming visual aesthetic to present ninjas as cute, dare we say lovable little scamps, who simply want to save the world from the forces of evil magic, all while using non-lethal means. The basics of combat vary depending on which character you choose to play. Adding some variety to the combat are quests that require you to go out and search the forest for specific kind of flowers to unlock new magical abilities, experience orbs spread around the world let you level up your character's various traits, and sequences that let you ride a ninja hat like a sled down snowy mountain slopes and river rapids. Download the mini ninja demo, available now. If you're looking for add-ons this week, you're going to want to take a look at the new content available for Red Faction Gorilla titled Demons of the Badlands. New vehicles, weapons, and missions await fans of Red Faction Gorilla in this prologue store. 
Despite its sparse story elements, Demons of the Badlands is a hard add-on to pass up because it simply offers more of Red Faction Guerrilla's greatest strengths. The Thrill of Destruction. Demons of the Badlands is available now on the PlayStation Network for $9.99. In the video department, a trailer for Gearbox Software's Portalands hits the PlayStation Network this past week. Sci-fi Mad Max style action with a very distinctive look make this trailer worth a watch even if you've seen it elsewhere. Well there's a look at the latest hitting the PlayStation Network this week. Be sure to check GameSpot.com and PlayStation.com for details on these and all the updates hitting the PlayStation Network. And there you have it PS3 owners, the latest downloadable bounty for your viewing slash playing pleasure. But don't you worry, Xbox 360 types, we've got something to spice up your weekend as well. Isn't that right, Lark? We've got Donald Mustard, the man behind Shadow Complex here, to answer your questions and give us some tips in this week's starting block. Hey, what's up, everybody? Ryan here, and I'm standing by with Donald Mustard. How are you doing? Great to be here. Oh, thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. Now, this is a very special starting block. Now, the Shadow Complex just came out. What are general strategies for people just getting the game? All right, perfect. Let's start with just some really general strategies for playing the game. So the first thing you need to know is that you need to use your flashlight. Wherever you are in the game, your flashlight will illuminate different secrets in the environment, different things that you can interact with. And it's easy once you get really kind of into the game to forget that you should be shining your flashlight around the rooms to make sure that you're at least remembering all the kind of secrets that are kind of going on. So that's your first strategy, use your flashlight. Now, the game is about exploration. Uh, over combat or anything. So you, you need to be paying attention to the environment. Double back on yourself. Go back and explore areas that you've come through with some of the new abilities you've found and see if there's more power-ups and secrets that you can find because that's going to be just just critical to getting through the game. And, and honestly, and that's where you're going to have the most fun in the game is by really just enjoying the environment you're in. Now, if you ever do get lost, use your map. Your map will give you all the information you need to get through the game. Now, if you get really stuck, there's a blue line that will show you where you should probably be heading next. Now, you can toggle that on and off with the X button, so don't be afraid to use it. That being said, if you're a more hardcore gamer, turn that blue line off. <laughs> right. You shouldn't be using it. Explore the game. That's what you should be doing. Every square of the map that you reveal, you get a lot of experience. But you also get a lot of experience for killing guys. That being said, you can string together special attacks to get tons of experience. There's like a, an experience multiplier, and you can get that multiplier ticking up by getting headshots, by using melee attacks, by kicking the little robots that are around the, the level, by exploiting bosses, and you can chain those together to get your multiplier really high. You can get your multiplier even up to a 10x multiplier. So here's the best strategy. Find a room that has like a power-up, like a, a grenade pack or something in it. Because when you get a grenade pack, you get a, a huge experience uh, bonus right at that moment. So go into a room, kill a bunch of guys really fast, and watch your multiplier at the bottom of the screen. Get a bunch of headshots, get your multiplier up to six or seven or eight or nine or ten, and then get the grenade pick up while that's happening, and you'll get like 10,000 experience at once. Oh. You'll just get a ton of experience. So if you can chain together kills and get a pick up at the same time, that is where you're exploiting, exploiting the game at its finest. You also get a lot more experience for playing on higher difficulty levels. So if you think you have the chops, turn it on to insane or hardcore and you'll really start to get a lot of experience. And you can do that at any time from just going to the pause menu, you can change your difficulty on the fly. Don't worry, I'll know who to shoot. Those are probably the best first playthrough of the game tips that I could, I could give you at this point. So once you've beaten the game, uh, there's still a lot more game left to play. You know, on your second or third playthrough, it would be a good time to try doing like a speed run. See if you can beat the game in under two hours getting 100% of the items. Or, or even see if you can find some of the ways we put in the game to, to sequence break the game and to get things out of order. That's going to be the most challenging stuff to do. And I'm not going to give you any tips on that. I'm just going to throw the challenge out there. There is a way to get the foam gun within the first 10-15 minutes of the game. I wouldn't even attempt to try it until you've beaten the game. You probably need to be about a level 30 character. I would say above a level 30 guy before you should even try it, or else you're just gonna get owned. But get your guy to level 30, and then see if you can find the secrets we've put in the game for you, because they're pretty 
pretty cool. All right, so before you got here today, we kind of let the GameSpot audience know you're coming by. Said send your questions over, we'll put them in front of Donald and uh, get them answered. So one of them that came in, actually a lot of them that came in asked uh, some of the same questions, so we're gonna pick those ones. Uh, Guy Yuval will get the credit for this one out of Haifa, Israel. He wants to know, is uh, Shadow Complex, obviously we know it's pretty much an Xbox Live exclusive, but I wanted to ask you, is that gonna come out for the PC? A lot of people wanna know. Currently, there are no plans for that, and it's not in development. So right. we'll have to wait and see. All right, this might be uh, pretty much the same answer, but Jason out of Huntington Beach wants to know, uh, will Shadow Complex be getting any downloadable content? All right, so Jason, so we, we built the game in a way that it will support downloadable content, and if you've had a chance to play the game, you know that there's the campaign mode, and there's also the Proving Grounds maps. We really wanted to give gamers everything that we had built. So what you guys have now is everything we have. It, you have all the game, you have all the Proving Grounds maps, um, but we built the game in a way that we could add DLC to it. If people really like the game and they want more DLC, then I don't see why we wouldn't support that. Currently, again, we don't have anything in development, but uh, yeah, if it warrants it, you know, I, I don't see why we wouldn't support it. Super cool. All right, uh, any last words from you before, uh, to the fans out there watching before we let you go? In the time that the game's been out, we've been able to see how you guys are doing, and we're really impressed by some of the scores out there and some of the things that you guys are doing. And we can't wait for you to see if you guys can beat our times that we know we can beat the game in. So good luck. Right on. Don Mustard, <laughs> thanks so much for coming by. All right, Super thank appreciate you. it. Back right. to the show. Some great tips for Shadow Complex from the man himself. Thanks for joining us, Donald. Right now we're going to turn our attention to the future of gaming, which looks surprisingly like the inside of a German convention hall. Let's check in with the GameSpot International team and their coverage from Gamescom in Germany. Hello and welcome to Gamescom 2009 and what is now the biggest consumer game show in the world. We've been scouring the show floor, going behind the scenes to bring you the, big, the biggest and best interviews. So let's go and see what we've been up to. Uh, hop an ollie over this red one here. Avoid that one. Oh. And I'm lucky enough to be joined by David Rutter, who is the producer of FIFA 10 on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Now, David, you know, every couple of months you're showing something new. What is it uh, this time in Germany? So you can upload pictures of yourself to the EA Football World website, uh, generate an in-game head and then download it into your game and then play that uh, pro in any of our game modes, online and offline, uh, and grow him by unlocking things. Guys, I'm here with Patrice from the Assassin's Creed team at Ubisoft Montreal and uh, we've just checked out the Assassin's Creed 2, it's looking pretty awesome on the 360. Um, so tell us a little bit about your new demo you're showing off at Cologne. At E3 we showed you a real mission, the flying machine, and it was a little bit more driven. This time it was just the toy with us. We showed you Florence, a new city that we haven't shown before. Shown you like the, uh, the currency system, the economic system just throwing money to see people react and trying to get the money on the floor. We uh, showed you the eagle vision that you can now use while you move instead of just being in first person. That's all from us in Cologne. Remember, you can check out all of our coverage from Germany by heading over to gamescom.gamespot.com. But for now, we will see you again soon. So there's a look at some of the action coming out of Gamescom. A lot of stuff going on there, man. PS3 Slim announced. Right, between that and Fable 3, there's a lot of exciting news coming out of there. That's true, and we've got a whole lot more of it on our site. Be sure to check out our comprehensive coverage of Gamescom. Now, one of the other games they're showing there, DJ Hero, we actually got to take a live look at last week. So let's go check out that demo right now. All right, welcome to our game demo. Today we've got Will Townsend here to show off DJ Hero. Will, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Chris. I appreciate it, man. It's great to see this game. We've seen it in action a little bit, but today we want to focus some, on something that makes this unique, something that's very DJ about it. Mm. I don't know what the adjective form of that is. If you're looking for something DJ, I've got just the thing. Okay. Let's focus on the crossfader. Yeah. And uh, this is kind of similar to being able to pat your head and rub your tummy at the same time. I can mostly... Okay, Do well, that. maybe some of the people out there have a hard time. Would I be a good DJ then? Yes, I'm okay. sure of it. <laughs> um, so, the way it works is uh, the crossfader is always your friend. It helps you to emphasize the different records that you're playing. So if I have it on this side, it's going to emphasize one of my records. If I have it on the other side, that's going to emphasize the second record. And if it's in the middle? Both records at the same time? You're a genius. So, uh, as we're going through in gameplay, at the easier levels, all I have to do is worry about my right hand. Okay. But if I want to become a DJ hero, I'm going to have to use this left hand to catch the notes using my crossfader. And I say catch the notes because people are familiar with Guitar Hero, right? Absolutely. So you got those streams coming down, and they stay static in the same place. Mm -hmm. What if they were to move? 
you'd have to move over to, to get them. Exactly, man, exactly. So that's why we use the crossfader to catch them. Okay. And so we'll come in, we'll come out. Now, as we get, uh, as we get to learn about this, first we'll have just kind of simple crossfades. Whew. Now that can be really tricky because you don't know where center is. So what we've done is we've added a little notch. Here, you can try that out for yourself. There's a little bit of... Okay, a little catch. Yeah, a little catch so you know where center is without looking down. Well, do you think we could see you in action real quick? You want to do a little... Yeah. You want to do a little stabbing? Let's fire it up. Uh, maybe? Yeah, yes. yes. The whole thing. All right. Do it. Let's, okay. Let's make this happen. Okay. I'll just go ahead and jump in. This is something a little bit, a little bit tougher. Okay. A little bit more aggressive. I like it. I mean, you're stabbing, so you got the aggression locked down. Certainly. <laughs> now, Crossfader, you said, introduces uh, in the medium difficulty, and then it sort of moves up from there. Absolutely. Uh, now, you've got the stabs, and you've got the sort of... There we go. Boom. Okay, and so nice little animation, too. It jets out to the side, really reinforces that. Right, exactly. You can see that little effect come off saying, good job, you're hitting it at the right time. Yeah, and I've noticed you come back from these... Uh, Little sojourns off to record two, uh -huh. uh, and you're having to press a button at the same time. That, so what we're, what difficulty are we on now? Uh, we're on hard right now. Okay. We are on hard. So you'll see there's button presses that happen on the outside. Here's one, and you just kind of catch it. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. Now what what if you uh, if you miss a crossfade? I see that the sort of the line goes dead. There's no uh, color. Now How do you that, get back on track. Well, that's kind of dangerous, right? Because if you were DJing in the real space, it probably would sound pretty awful if you were missing your, your crossfades and you get out of rhythm. Yeah. So what we do is we give you a chance to get right back on track because you don't have a band like in Guitar Hero backing you up. It's all you. It is all you. So it'll kind of grind for a second. You see here? Uh -huh. It just kind of goes sizzle, sizzle, sizzle and yeah. says, hey, let's make it all right again. Does that's that nice. Sense? Yeah, that's a nice, that's a nice concession to, uh, you know, solo, solo performance. Right. We don't want it to be... Uh, overwhelming to say that, hey, you need to improve. We want to encourage you. In fact, DJ Hero doesn't even have a, we, we have all of it as a no film mode. No kidding. Yep, because you want to hear your music. That's true. I mean, that's definitely one of the appeals and, you know, getting into the whole crossfade, wicka wicka, scritchy scratchy thing and to making yourself sound a little bit silly, but yeah. you have a blast with it. That's exactly what I'm thinking. I think a wise man once said, zooka zooka. Zooka Zooka indeed, Will. Thanks so much for bringing this by. It's All right, that's our DJ Hero game demo. Thanks to Will Townsend for coming by. A pleasure. Indeed. For more on DJ Hero, check out our preview on the site. And now let's head back to the show. That was a pretty fun demo. And now let's stick with the international theme and take a look at what's being recently released in Japan with Takeshi Hiraoka's Import Friendly. for your new import releases. The Dragon Ball universe hits the Wii in this action-adventure game, Dragon Ball Tenkaichi Daibouken. Tenkaichi Daibouken is a side-scrolling, platforming action game that recreates the original series in glorious 3D, from the battle against the Red Ribbon Army to the fight to the death with King Piccolo. Using the Wiimote and Nunchuck, the classic or GameCube controller, you can fight your enemies by unleashing a variety of attacks. Finish off your enemies with your Kamehameha! Dragon Ball Tenkaichi Daibouken was released on July 23, 2000 and will be available stateside as Dragon Ball Revenge of King Piccolo in winter of 2009. The Armor Court series comes to the PSP with Armor Court 3 Portable. The PS2 version from 2002 gets a refresh with new multiplayer modes, new units, new items, and new UI refinement. New modes include 1v1, 2v2, and a battle royale using the PSP's ad hoc functionality. Armor Core 3 Portable has been available in Japan since July 30th, 2009. A US release has yet to be announced. The long-awaited Monster Hunter Try for the Wii has finally been released and has been pulverizing sales records ever since. For those who don't know, Monster Hunter is a hack-and-slash action-adventure game in which you as the hunter will venture out into a world of monsters and hunt them down using skill and strategy. This new version features four-player online play, two-player split-screen, and new underwater and desert environments. It also includes new monsters, new moves, new materials, and new items. Monster Hunter Tri was released in Japan on August 1st, 2009, and a US and European release has just been announced for 2010. So it's only a matter of time before you too can start monster hunting on the Wii. And that was some new import releases of the past month. Make sure you watch the new import friendly as Kevin Van Ord takes you on a trip through Demon's Souls. 
And keep your eyes on GameSpot.com as we bring you ongoing coverage of Gamescom. This is Takeshi from Cologne, Germany saying, Auf Wiedersehen! Thanks, Takeshi. And now it's time to give away some of this sweet Shadow Complex swag. Lark, tell them what they could win. We've got books, we've got signed posters, and we've got t-shirts and an undisclosed number of full game codes. Those could be yours, and if you think you know the answer, send us a response using the module on the page or by sending us an email at onthespot at gamespot.com. So, without further ado, the first question for the t-shirt, who is the voice of Jason Fleming? For the posters signed by the writer of Shadow Complex, Peter David, name the base that you explore in Shadow Complex. And now, finally, for the coveted game codes, as well as the book that the game is inspired by, name the author and title of that book. If you think you know the answers, be sure to respond in the module on the page once again, and email us at onthespot at gamespot.com. All right, that'll about do it for today, folks. Thanks for joining us. Lark, before we go, be sure to check out our continued coverage of BlizzCon and Gamescom all the way through Sunday. And be sure to join us next Tuesday for the latest episode of Today on the Spot. For all the crew here and all the GameSpot, I'm Chris Waters. And I'm Lark Anderson. Have a great weekend, everybody.